Hi everyone, welcome back to Feeding Raven Doodles, a pet parent's guide to nutrition. Today's topic is how to transition your pet to a new diet. Now, there are so many different reasons that you might need to change up what you're feeding your pet. Puppies and kittens need to be transitioned to adult food eventually, and some pets with health conditions or older pets might need to be put on special diets. Whatever the reason, there are certain things that you're gonna need to keep in mind when you do transition your pet to a new diet to ensure that they stay safe and healthy throughout the process. So that's what we'll be talking about today. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is body condition score your pet. This is a simple, easy, and very important way that you can stay on top of your pet's health. By learning how to body condition score, you can tell if your pet is too fat or too skinny or just right. To learn how to do this, check out the video, How to Body Condition Score. Body condition scoring is gonna be very important when you find a pet food that's right for your pet and when you calculate their daily caloric needs. The next step is going to be finding a new diet that's right for your pet. The first part of this step is finding a pet food company that is reliable, employs experts, has good quality control, and is based in science and research. To learn more about this, check out How to Pick a Pet Food Part 1. The second part in this step is going to be choosing a diet that's right for your pet's needs. This is going to be based on their species, life stage, activity level, body condition, and many other factors. To learn more about this, check out How to Pick a Pet Food Part 2. An important part of feeding your pet is making sure that they're getting the right number of calories every day. Feeding too many calories can lead to weight gain and eventually obesity, and feeding too few calories can lead to weight loss and malnutrition. To learn how to do the calculation, check out the video, How to Calculate Your Pet's Calorie Needs. Then you're going to want to make sure you have enough of the old food left to give you a long enough transition time. So you're going to need to make sure that you have at least one week's worth of the old food so that you can portion out meals so that the old food gradually becomes less and less each day while the new food becomes more and more each day. You're not going to want to start a transition if you have too little of the old food left. So you might need to buy a small bag of that old food so that you can make the transition longer if need be. Here is a general outline of the portions that your pet should get each day during the transition. This is the most important step because changing your pet to the new food too quickly can cause digestive upset such as vomiting and diarrhea. Some pets who have more sensitive stomachs than others will require a longer and slower transition period. So the days here might turn into weeks. This is especially true of cats who are notoriously fussy. Um, so again, you might, instead of seeing day one, day two, day three, it might be week one, week two, week three. This is another reason why you're going to wanna make sure that you have um, enough of that old food to transition with. First, you're going to need to know how much of the old food your pet is getting each day, and then you're going to need to figure out how much of the new food they need each day. Both of these can be in volume, such as a cup, or they can be in weight, such as grams. I personally prefer grams because they're much more accurate. To figure out this, you're going to need to check out the video, How to Accurately Measure Your Pet's Food. Once you have these numbers, you're going to Next, plug them into that table and find out exactly how much of each type of food they're getting every day. So here is an example that I'm giving you with two hypothetical different pet foods. So let's say the pet needs 150 grams of that old food each day, but they only need 100 grams of the new food per day. So I have used the first row for old food and in each space, I have multiplied 150 grams times the percentage that they need each day. So for the first box, 150 times 0.9 or 90% is only 135 grams of that old food. Below that, we've got the new food, 100 times 0.1 or 10%. So they only need 10 grams of that new food. And going down the line, you can see that the old food decreases in grams and the new food increases in grams until day eight, which is the day that the pet is 100% on the new food. 
This is an example using cups. So the pet needs two cups of the old food per day, but they only need one and a half cups of the new food per day. So once again, the first row is the old food and I've multiplied two cups by each percentage going down the line. And the second row is the new food and that is also being increased as you go down the line. Now this is just a screenshot of my website, feedingravendoodles.com, and here I'm just showing you that I have a, an actual spreadsheet um, with the formulas already plugged in for you, so you don't have to do any math. If you go to feedingravendoodles.com slash articles slash how to transition your pet to a new diet, you can use this table to quickly and easily calculate your pet's food for a transition by just plugging in how many cups of the old food they need, how many cups of the new food, or how many grams of the old food and how many grams of the new food. The final and very important step when transitioning your pet to a new diet is monitoring them. It's very normal for pets to have minor digestive upset during this process, such as increased gas or flatulence, or maybe a softer stool. But if there are any serious changes, such as vomiting or diarrhea, or if your pet refuses to eat, you're going to need to stop feeding the new food and contact their usual veterinarian right away. Thank you so much for watching this how-to video on transitioning your pet to a new diet. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. Check out that description below where I give you a couple of resources that I use to create this video. And leave any comments if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos. Don't forget to check out feedingravendoodles.com where I have a full collection of articles, videos, and resources for you. Next time, we're going to be talking about the importance of oral health. Say bye, Raven. Bad girl.